What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I know I have been away from here for quite a while and I'm going to explain that very briefly. So I am a first year graduate student and this is my first semester and it has been the hardest semester of my entire life in terms of the courses that I'm taking. I'm also working as a TA, which I'm very grateful to have that position. But I just wanted to say that I've had to put YouTube on the back burner a little bit, but the semester is almost over. I'm almost there and I'll be able to put more time and effort into making these videos because I truly do love making them. So if you're new here or if you have seen my videos before, consider subscribing because I promise more are getting ready to come out very soon as the semester comes to an end. So with that being said, let's talk about today's video. Today I'm going to be showing you all how to make an apple pie. This is one of my favorite pies, but I want to explain kind of what my ideal apple pie is. So for me, an apple pie has to have relatively thin cut apples on the inside and they're kind of stacked up. And then you also need to have an extra crust on top with some of that really thick kind of crunchy sugar on top. That's just absolutely perfect to me. So that's what I'm going to be attempting to make today. So without further ado, let's dive into this video. All right, the first thing that you are going to need for this pie is, of course, apples. And you're going to need three pounds of them. So this might seem like a lot and you probably won't use all of them, but it's going to vary depending on how deep your pie pan is. Next, we need to peel said apples. And I'm going to go ahead and say you will need a peeler for this. It's going to make this process much faster and it's probably the hardest thing to do in this whole process. And don't sweat it if you miss some of the skin. It's okay if a little bit ends up in there. You just don't want so much that it makes the pie kind of chewy and hard to bite through. All right, once your apples have been peeled, you can go ahead and sharpen your knife or just grab one that's already fairly sharp. And then the easiest way to do this is to just cut these apples into four cheeks around the core. This is going to prevent any tough or bitter material from getting inside of your pie. And this is the easiest way for me. So simply do that for all of your apples and you'll end up with a big pile of these cheeks that you will then cut down further. Now with apple pie, you want to toe the line between a slice of apple that is somewhat thick, but also thin enough to cook to be fairly soft. So I'm recommending shoot for about half the width that you would normally go with in a typical apple slice that you would eat. I would definitely err on the side of these being somewhat thinner if you are having a hard time deciding because no one's going to want a crunchy apple pie, but try to shoot for this shape here. Once all of your apples have been chopped, you can simply just scrape them up with your knife and then set them into a stainless steel bowl. Next we are going to be doing a process that is called maceration. Yes, maceration, haha, ha, funny, laugh at it, but it's essentially where we're just drawing water out of the fruit. This is often used in jellies. To do this, we need to add one cup of dark brown sugar, a quarter teaspoon salt, two teaspoons cinnamon plus a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, one and three fourths tablespoon of cornstarch. This is going to add a thickening agent inside of our pie, a third of a cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice, and there you have it, maceration mania. Just so we're clear, maceration is typically done with just sugar, and I'm sure that the acids from the lemon juice are going to help out with this, but you're essentially just going to fold this around and make sure all of your apples are thoroughly coated and let this sit for 30 minutes. And if you want to be cool like me, you can play with your food and toss these things around for fun. Shibang! While we wait on our apples, we need to add one and three fourths tablespoon of cornstarch, so the other half to three tablespoons of water. We're making a cornstarch slurry, which is essentially going to help thicken things up and make for a nice pie filling. All right, the 30 minutes is up and your apples have macerated, so we are going to then drain all of the liquid out into a separate bowl. This stuff is liquid gold and you want to save it. We are using it for the filling. So now we're going to take our filling and mix it with some good quality butter. Try to use something besides store brand butter here. This is my first time using this, but I actually really enjoyed it. Here I have added three and a half tablespoons of butter to a small saucepan and I'm just swirling it around until it melts and now I'm going to be adding in that liquid from my apples and this stuff is going to essentially create a nice filling and we're adding our cornstarch slurry which activates with heat and after you have this over medium heat for like a minute or two it'll definitely thicken up and it should be the consistency of something very similar to caramel. All right, let's talk about pie crust. So today I'm going to be using a pre-made one. If you want to see me make a pie crust, you can check out my other pie videos because I definitely have that up here. But you simply want to roll it out to fit your pie pan and then essentially 
lay it over your pie pan with a little bit of overhang. Now we're just spreading out our apples to have a nice base layer and then from here you really want to keep these apples as flat as possible and kind of make a ring going around into a spiral until you end up with something nice and flat and compacted like this. Then simply take that thickened filling and just drizzle it over the top and after you have all of this filling up here you can go ahead and evenly spread this out with a spoon. And next I'm simply taking another piece of pie crust, rolling it out to the same length as my other one, and now I'm just squeezing the tops together and trimming the edges. You really want to be sure this is sealed so you don't have any blowouts on the side. You also want to be sure you have enough overhang left over to make some nice crimps around the edges, which I will discuss now. So you're essentially going to take your knuckle and just fold your pie crust around your knuckle, and you're going to repeat this process all the way around until you get something nice and beautiful like this. I would highly recommend placing this in your freezer for about 10 minutes to really hold up that pie crust edge until you hit the oven because it will flatten out as you will see mine did. But just hit this with some egg wash and then top it off with some sugar in the raw. The sugar in the raw is nice granular thick sugar and it's going to add a nice crunch to the top of the pie which I personally really like. Next we need to cut slits into the top of our pie enabling it to breathe and essentially prevent it from blowing up in our oven and making an apple pie mess. Let's eat! Oops. So the way that I like to do this is essentially make a plus sign and then make an X so in total you're making 8 cuts. We are then going to bake this on 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 to 45 minutes until your pie comes out nice and golden brown. I mean, come on. Look at this thing. It looks absolutely amazing. It's nice and golden brown. It has the crunchy sugar on top and the smell is absolutely amazing. I know you can't smell this through your screen, but you can imagine what it smells like. It's got some nice cinnamon flavor, apple flavor, nutmeg, all of those wonderful spices. And you guys absolutely have to make this thing. It's a timeless classic and it will always be one of my favorite pies. Now the way to cut this is to cut out a very small slice in the middle and this is kind of the throwaway slice. You can eat this obviously and then you'll be able to cut a much more even piece of pie. I hope you all give this one a try but let's go ahead and give this thing a taste test. Alright guys let's go ahead and give this apple pie a quick taste test. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So for me personally, Granny Smith apples are my go-to for this. They have a nice tart flavor, which I really like. Um, the actual like coating and filling of the apples themselves, uh, it's really good. I do think that the maceration process of the apples makes them the perfect texture, so they're not too crunchy, but they're also not too soggy. They still got a little bit of a bite. My favorite part about this though is definitely that crunchy sugar on top. Um, I'm sure you notice on a few spots of this pie, a few of the edges got a little bit dark. You can prevent that by putting tin foil around the edges. I'm going to admit I was playing video games while this was in the oven and I got caught up in the end game of the match that I was in so I had to let it sit an extra minute or so. So don't do that but all in all this pie is really good. I do think I could have made it look a little bit better. So some key points that I want you to take away from this. If you use the sugar on top, uh, you might have seen like a few little brown spots. That's kind of where that sugar got clumped up. So one, go light on the egg wash. You only need a little bit. Be sure to cover the top, but don't go too heavy on it because that's going to make that sugar clump up. Also, be very light on the sugar on top. It's perfectly fine if you have more, it's just going to make it look more nice and neat if you just do a nice sprinkle on the top. So all in all, I'm going to give the flavor of this pie a solid 8 out of 10. The crust could have been a little bit more undercooked uh, around the edges, it is darker in some spots. But this is a fantastic pie and I will definitely be making this again. If you would, drop a like on this video and comment something that you want to see me cook next. I'm open to any and all options. I like to bake, I like to cook, I like to grill. So let me know something down in the comments that you want to see and I will definitely put it on my list of things to cook. That being said, I will see you all on the next one.